So friends, we can now have some question and answer. And uh, today, uh, what you can do is uh, you can write your question on the chat. And uh, Captain Joy will read out the question to me. And then we can all discuss the answer. So if any one of you has any question, you can quickly write it in the chat box. Okay, please write your question in the chat, whoever wants to ask. Yes. Uh, this question is from uh, Mr. Ankur Agarwal. He says he runs a business and he has a vision for his company. Then how do I stay desireless? How do I? For stay desireless. Okay. So desirelessness is not ambitionlessness, but it is in the sense that you have noble ambitions. You want to run your business, but you do understand that the real business belongs to God, that you are doing this temporarily and this is not your final goal. So having becoming a billionaire through your expanded business is not the final goal of life. This is only an en route program. If you understand that the final goal of life is to find God, then accordingly you will run, you will still run your business. But firstly, you will run on dharmic principles because you know that if you are not you know, going straight with your business, then you are involving yourself with more, more karma. So you will run your business in a way where you are not entangled with more selfish desire means I, me, mine. You will be more considerate about all the employees and you will you know, love them as your partners because you, you want to eventually merge with God. So your direction towards your employees will be different. Your goal in your mind is not simply to become a billionaire, but to do service to others, which is also en route to your goal of finding God. So we are all to do the daily roles that we have been given. The teacher will continue to teach. The doctor will continue to see the patients and the banker will continue to do his job. But the inner attitude of doing this job will change because we will now see the client as God. And therefore, he will do justice to that client. He will work with the client with love. He will not try to cut corners. He will try to serve the client with full capacity and with full sincerity, not trying to cheat or to cut corners for little physical or material gains because all that material gain will go to dust. So you will clearly understand that little material gain out of you know even minute kind of cheating is a useless gain. Therefore, sticking to dharmic and high principles, you will perform your role and you will offer the fruits of all your actions to God and you will allow him to decide as to what comes eventually of your business. All the time remembering that all this is God and it belongs to God and I too belong to God and eventually I'm going to go in that direction. So I hope uh, that helps a little. Okay. Any other question? There is another question from Pooja. If we are engrossed in the material world, can we not experience God? Okay, good question. So, uh, everything is God. Even the material world is God. But the point is, if your mind is too engrossed with only the objects of this world, how will you make note of the subject which is God? Your needle of attention has to be towards spirit. Spirit and matter are con existing together. Simultaneously, Nirgun Brahman and Sagun Brahman are existing. But if all your attention is on the formed creation, then how will you, you know, uh, understand the existence of God as spirit? So eventually to understand your soul self and to understand God as spirit, you have to take your mental faculty away from the objects of the world to the pure witness consciousness. So whether you like it or not, that eventual turn you will have to make. Till that time being. Now, the good thing is, once you have made that turn, once you have understood that God exists as spirit and is only temporarily manifesting as creation, then you can lead a worldly life beautifully. But first you have to understand 
that it is God. Do you understand that God is pervading the people around you? If no, then first you have to leave the world and focus on God. Once you do understand that God is the real, you know, doer and pervading everybody, then you live in this world beautifully. Okay, so first make that divine contact. First understand the truth in yourself. First know that you are the soul. Only then you will be able to see the soul in others. How will you see the God in others when you have not found the God in yourself? And how will you find the God in yourself if you are too busy with the things of this world? So yes, we need to turn inwards first. But understanding the truth, then we can live in this world as you are suggesting. Okay. We have the next question from Nidhi. Yes. Saying, I am very confused as to what is the purpose of my existence. Okay. Kindly guide on how can I help realize it. Okay. It's a very, very basic question which everybody should ask. Now, most people are so busy in their lives and running the race of life that they are not even pausing to ask this question. So, the, the good thing is that you are asking this question and you must then simply... the very simple terms, what do we want? We want happiness and we want to avoid pain. Simply stating this can be put as the purpose of life. Now, if I am still in pain means I have not met the purpose of my. So if my purpose of life is simply to be happy all the time, unconditionally, then I must ask the next question, how will I attain this purpose of having no suffering and sorrow and only happiness? And that will come only when you are realizing yourself as an image of God. Unless you realize that you are the soul self, you nothing can take away the suffering of this world. Therefore, the purpose of life in theoretical terms can be put as self-realization or understanding God is the purpose of life. But simplifying it to our level, being happy unconditionally is the purpose of life from the egoic standpoint and both of them are related because soul realization is realizing yourself as such a ananda that you are ananda itself so unless you realize that you are bliss itself and that will come with meditation and with spiritual life you will not meet the purpose of life whether you call it self realization soul realization god realization unconditional happiness unconditional love whatever you may call it to feel that you are one that one power that exists and that is beyond sorrow and suffering. That is the purpose of life. And the, in the entire spiritual journey, all the yogic paths are designed to take you in that direction. So how do I meet? Then I practice all the yogas. Means as a bhakta, I allow and surrender to the God. As a karma yogi, I perform all actions of this world, giving the fruits of action to God and knowing that he is the doer. As a jnani, I ask this question, what is the purpose of my life? Who am I really? And then I use the sword of my intellect and my discrimination to reach to that point. As a yogi and a meditator, I put my attention inwards because inwards lies the soul reality. So I do all that is in my power. I follow all paths of yoga and that's how I realize that, oh, I am made of ananda itself. That actually in my soul there is no suffering and therefore this is how I will meet the purpose of my life. Okay. There is one query that uh, when do you plan to start the Kriya Yoga level 1 next batch? Please okay, advise. it's very soon, just maybe a couple of weeks, uh, maybe next week. Actually Diwali is coming so we, we find that you know around Diwali people are less able to come for meditation because they have other activities. So maybe right after Diwali, the weekend that happens or the next after that, we will be having a level one and I will post it on the group. So you and all of you are most welcome. You can also share this information with your friends, relatives, whoever you think is interested. But I will give you a caution. Don't impose your interest on, of meditation on others because this comes from an inner calling. Each one is individually called by God and the Guru and it is your own love that will bring you here, your own yearning. So don't force anybody, just suggest and share the information with others who may be interested. Okay. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you, dear ones. And we will meet again next Thursday and continue our study. In the meantime, tomorrow I'm visiting Pune for the spiritual renewal weekend. 
and I will share some nice pictures and some, and I'm sure you are also attending online for those who are uh, not able to go. So uh, we'll see each other soon. Thank you. Jai Guru. God bless us all.